Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today is day four of our painting the day challenge. And as I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to be painting a comic page for you. This isn't any kind of long running story or anything. It's just this single page comic. And it's this today is really exciting for me because painting comics, creating comics, the entire comic making process is something that I have always wanted to do and if you've seen any of the really old videos on this channel you know that before I was you know that great at art I was <laughs> making videos about uh, making a comic you don't have to go watch those you really really don't have to um, unless you want to see how far I've come in art because <laughs> that was a long time ago but anyway, um, I'm really excited just to have kind of dipped my toes in to a little bit of a comic cre creating process and this was really, I just took the first idea that popped into my head and I drew it. And um, I started with knowing that I wanted it to be just one page so it could be a single illustration or single page and uh, that was the first thing I knew and the second thing that I knew is that I wanted to draw hands so a series of hands in slightly varying positions so going from that I kind of stemmed in these other ideas of well if the hand is gradually relaxing then maybe it's dropping something and um, then went with that so this, I decided to keep a really limited color palette and only kind of only use two colors, basically two colors, like a burnish, a burnt sienna ish color and then a darker color. So this kind of warm reddish brown and then a darker one. And the other was a blue. So kind of just a red and a blue, like an earthy red. And then the blue was like a Prussian blue and an indigo. So, um, warm red, dark red, and Prussian blue, dark blue. So um, four colors technically, but just red and blue. And um, when I thought about initially coloring this page, I was really intimidated because I wanted the page to look good together with all of its panels. But when I thought about trying to make colors that were harmonious, I got really nervous. So I just told myself I was gonna limit myself to only a few colors and that worked out pretty well. Uh, I really enjoyed especially having the majority of this first panel here be that reddish color in the skin and in the hair so that was really fun and then I just incorporated the blue for the eyes and the page overall I really enjoyed. I liked in the very beginning kind of blending the two reddish tones together to um, to make the hair a bit more colorful and a bit more dynamic. And one thing that you may have already noticed is that already the colors are a lot less saturated in the hair because the paint has dried. So, and that that's like a standard thing for like cotton watercolor paper or watercolor paper with a higher cotton content, I should say. So when the colors dry, and oftentimes on cold pressed paper like this, the colors shift a bit. It's surprisingly called color shift, who knew? But um, yeah, the colors become less saturated, and I know I could put on more layers, but um, in a paper like this, it's really difficult to maintain that vibrancy. In a more plasticky or less cotton paper, um, the vibrancy might be retained a bit more, but then you don't have the paint soaking into the paper as much, so there's kind of give and take with the different types of paper, but um, I love that vibrancy that watercolor has when you first lay it down and it's wet and it's beautiful. But then of course the drawing helps with the colors blending together too. So you know, it's all a process and it's, it is what it is and it's fun and I like it. <laughs> I would say that these three hand panels are my favorite of the whole page. I just really enjoyed making each one a little bit different, but still trying to keep them similar. Because when I thought about doing comic work before, the idea of gradual changes um, where, for example, if you have a character's face and in the next panel they're just making a slightly different exp expression. The concept to me of having to redraw something only a tiny bit different 
and not doing that digitally was really intimidating to me and it just felt so tedious and of course people have been doing it that way for a long long time but I always felt like if I wanted to do comics, I had to learn how to draw digitally first. So I never really got too far in the comic making because I never felt competent enough in my digital work to um, start creating what I would consider to be finished products. And I mean, even this page in my more comfortable traditional mediums is a bit rough at the end, but it's, that's all right. It's just for a personal project. But um, yeah, it was re reassuring for me to see that I could create something that I still enjoy using traditional mediums and just enjoy the process and know that it's gonna take time because Painting and drawing and planning and com composing a page takes time. It just does. So it was really nice to see that there were so many little bits to enjoy, like laying down the darker values and seeing the, the bits of each panel come together and how they all flow together. And it was fun. The process overall was really enjoyable, and I definitely am planning to do more comic-type projects in the future. And I really like to write too. I've actually been a, you know, amateur writer for longer than I've been an artist or longer than I've been drawing, I should say. And um, it's, that's a fun thing to kind of cross over and include in different ways. I was thinking that this last panel with the necklace having fallen onto the ground and we're seeing it broken, um, on the pavement, I was worried that this would be really boring for me to paint because I love painting figures and people and I was worried that this panel of details that I wouldn't enjoy it as much so I wouldn't give it the attention that it needed, but I probably spent the most time on this panel just trying to get textures and shading. I think this is the only one with like like more legitimate shading, kind of. And uh, I'm happy that I actually did still enjoy working on this panel and that it wasn't just a nightmare of pain and suffering for me, which I mean, the whole page is kind of a nightmare of pain and suffering thematically, I guess. So here's a question. So you look at the page overall, and I'd like to know your opinions. And uh, we've got a girl who is very distraught in the first frame. And then she slowly releases this necklace. She's crying. And then it's here it is on the ground broken. So in your opinion, is she crying because it's broken? Or did it break because she dropped it? <laughs> and this was something I was thinking about, not even thinking about it until I was editing the video. But I was like, hmm, is she upset because it's broken when she realized that, she, that it's broken, so she dropped it? Or is the memory of whatever the necklace represents what upsets her, so she breaks it and drops it? Hmm, I wonder. And I have an idea of what I think the story behind this is, but the fun thing about doing a one-page comic is that I'm able to kind of leave it up to you to interpret however you would like to. So let me know what you think. I would say my least favorite part of all of this is that swirly thing, mass, in the background behind some of the panels and around the fuller figure. I feel like it just looks like mud or dirty water, very slightly dirty water because I tried to mix the colors together and, you know, got a little bit lazy. Anyway, I thought that if I did some black lines around the outside that it would kind of give me a better idea of how to you know, add the final bit of contrast to the piece and how to, you know, add the final touches and things like that. And ultimately what it did was made me realize that I should have done it first because then I just painted outside the lines. <laughs> so I very, very uh, haphazardly went in with white gouache to clean up around the outside a little bit. I know it's still a mess, but I think it's a little bit better. And then I just took my red colored pencil to, uh, kind of reinforce some of the shading and the lines and the form. Can't forget the white gel pen for highlights. I kind of kept those to a minimum. And after I had added the white details, that was pretty much it. 
Um, this was fun. It was really fun. The hands, of course, are my favorite part. And I'm excited to know what you guys think of this. So we made it through another day. Tomorrow's is going to be fun. And we've done things. We did it. Okay, I am so done with this one. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.